Hey guys, and welcome to another Factorio refactorizing. And today I am unfortunately here alone. Uh, Will had some mic issues. He got a new mic and stuff, and uh, then he needed to stream. So I'm doing this one solo. But today we are in a factory submitted by Daniel. And this one, I quite like this one. There's some different stuff to go over than we have gone over, I think, which is, is nice, right? Because you can only go over the same thing so many times. So he's launched a rocket, as you can see. Um, here's the base. And he kind of just asked for general tips and kind of any suggestions I would have for where to go from here, uh, the point he's at. It looks like he's done quite a large, pretty standard main bus here. Uh, he has a couple outposts here, some iron and some copper over here, and another iron over here. Uh, this is all solar and accumulator, so that's what he's running off of. Uh, four or three, three point eight k at the moment. He's totally good there. So let's start. Um, oil. I'm not really going to cover oil because we've covered oil many times, and as I said, there's only so many times you can cover the same thing. You guys pretty much uh, know know our thoughts on that now. I do want to comment that I do. Uh, like the fact that he is only using like one or two tanks again I would prefer none but this is far better than some of the huge like tank arrays we've seen uh, so this is good first things first is this uh, this steel uh, that well steel and iron rather so what he's done is he's put well actually it looks like he has this is just iron sorry steels up here um, iron not bad it's backed up um, personally uh, at this stage I would suggest uh, not using level one module, uh, level one speeds in here and just making the thing bigger. And I know I have argued previously in, in some places that it's better to use modules than to just make something bigger, but that's not always the case. Um, usually my argument is in regards to like level three modules and beacons. Um, and the reason I say this primarily is because it looks like he's continuing to want to launch rockets. He has a rocket silo. He's making the parts um, continuously still over here, which we'll go over. Um, and the level one modules are a component for the rockets, right? Uh, they're used in these rock control units. So personally, I would say to, you know, save the uh, speed modules for your rocket control units or whatever, or your pump jacks rather than in the furnaces and just make the furnaces bigger. Um, and that's kind of what I was going to say with the steel. And this is actually an even better example because this is a little blocked in. It would be a pain, so I can kind of understand the thought process. But this one, um, he has tons of room. He can expand this, and steel is uh, steel requires a huge amount of smelting, right? Uh, you could expand this all the way out to that oil patch, and uh, you probably still wouldn't saturate your belt. Uh, my my point being, right, guys, is that it's not like it's not like you it's gonna hurt to expand it um, there's a lot of modules in here I put productivity in here just to test uh, it's not worth it unless you beacon stuff so speed if you're gonna do a module is best because he doesn't have power problems so efficiency isn't really needed um, so yeah I would personally say take the modules out of here um, send them to your rocket control unit factory and uh, just make this bigger just I mean you're not short on ore or anything just expand this up to like you know however far you need to to, to get the steel that you need and you should be good to go for that I do like the fact he's kind of using the design that uh, we use we, we don't usually do this with electric furnaces but it's still good uh, where he's just sending an ore and then just directly inserting the plate into the steel which works really well uh, I that's my favorite method so that's pretty good um, he does have a little bit of a mini stacker here which is not bad this is for the iron ore delivery for what looks like iron and steel this splits and goes through there um these unloaders are not bad um they're a little different but i've i've definitely seen worse this is not bad i'm not really going to mess with this belt this is kind of will's thing uh, but it's not really causing any problems one thing i do want to mention is this uh split off now i am no train expert as you guys know but i have been learning a bit uh, from playing with will and mojo and such and uh this oh dear this could end in a disaster, guys. Um, this is maybe not the best way to do it, doing it like this, because what this causes, right, is this means that um, a train that needs to go into here from this direction, which currently there isn't one, um, because there's no there's no iron out here. Um, so I, I think he just built this 
just in case. Um, but a train coming from this direction, if there was one that needed to get into here, has to cross this track to get in, which would kind of cut off anything else. Uh, now, I don't think I can do this just because there's not enough room and I'd have to move the entire stacker, but um, ideally for a junction like this, um, it's typically better to come off without uh, like crossing them. So just imagine we had room. Uh, I would have this one. This one's okay. Uh, but then just curve like this beforehand, right? So this one would come out and then this one we would just uh, curve down and they would kind of like meet in the middle. If, if you see what I mean, rather than crossing and then doing like a loop around, this one you just have cut off before this one um, and then they just connect into one track. Again, there's no room. We'd have to move like all this stuff. But uh, let me see if I can show an actual example down here where we do have room. Um, okay, so for this direction, right, if a train comes this way and needs to get in, we do this. And then for a train that is coming this direction, it needs to get in. Pray I don't get run over here. Um, you could do this. This is probably not ideal, uh, but that's the gist of it. Uh, what I would prefer is to actually have two rails coming in for a little bit of it at least. So have this like here or whatever, and then have this guy just cut off like way back here, right? If I can space it right. And then this one we just merge in, into here. Uh, and, and then you go into your stack or whatever, you get the point. So this one, you know, would come through here, they would merge into one track and then go to your stacker. And what this means is that this, um, I broke the signals, but uh, this means that these these don't have to cross, right? The, a train coming this way doesn't have to cross and cut off a train uh, coming this way. So that's kind of my thought and advice on that. Let me tear this up so the signals work again. Or maybe they're just broken in general. Interesting. This one seems to have really borked. There we go. Huh. Okay, so there's that. Uh, kind of the same thing here. He's done the same loopy thing down here, so we've already covered that. Now, it, it did look like another thing we can look at is the outpost, because this is a copper station, and the copper train seems to be stuck up here, and it didn't look like it was out of fuel uh, when I looked in the train view. So we're going to head up there and see what the deal is. It may be some signaling issues or, or something that we can fix over there. But, uh, but yeah, and then we'll take a look at the main bus and kind of round it out and end things there. In terms of general advice of where to go from here, I... Okay, well, he's out of fuel, but it's not really the problem, I don't think. Unless the train is... None of this is actually signaled, so this is dangerous. <laughs> um... We should give him some fuel though, which, uh, a little bit of fuel. Okay, so that goes that way. We would want some signals here. Uh, and that's actually the issue, I think, is this guy's full. Yeah, okay, so that's the issue, right? Is there's no signals here um, on this on this track. So this one was waiting, and wait has to wait until this guy passes this, like the signal that was over here. Um, so what we can do by adding more signals is make the wait uh, less, right? You typically want to signal about every train length um, or every power pull is a pretty good uh, judgment unless you're using uh, pretty big trains, but um, if we just put signals here, right, then what would happen is this, the, the guy that was waiting here would only have to wait for that other train to pass this signal before he could go um, rather than having to wait until he passes the one way over by the stacker uh, because the signals split the track into blocks and that's how they determine like if there's a train in here, right? So if we put this say, you know, this is like a, what kind of train is he, is he using one, four ones or, uh, wait, is that a one, three, one? Well, either way, um, this is big enough. So if we put this in here, oh, one, three ones. Okay, well that, that's uh, almost big enough. But what this does, right, is this now creates a block in between this signal and this signal. So if there's a train anywhere within here, uh, within this block, it's gonna turn this signal red, which means obviously no train can go. Um, putting them closer together, like this close, means that once a train passes out of this block, past this signal, a train can go. Um, whereas having this as one big block, like, like he had, means that the train was waiting way back here, um, even though it didn't necessarily have to, oh dear. 
this is this is dangerous. I know you guys are probably sitting on the edge of your seats waiting for me to just get mowed down. Um, you know, and we want to mirror this on the other side if possible. Um, and we'll just kind of do that. That's close enough. We could use a few more, but it's okay. You know, this one, it's not going to be exact. doesn't have to be exact, exact. But it is good to obviously mirror them because, you know, we could have the same issue on this side. And we'll go check out this outpost uh, anyway just to see kind of what's, what's going on over here. Jeez, come on, Exterm, stop running on the track. But yeah, overall, uh, pretty good base. So we're, you know, some ratio things. Uh, the science looked, the ratio looked a bit iffy. Um, there were different level assemblers and such, but that's not that big of a deal, really. Okay, so it looks like he's actually using a smart loader. 18, because there's six and there's uh, three wagons, so there's 18 boxes here. Um, and what this is doing is it's turning it into a negative, outputting it, and this should load all these boxes evenly. Yeah, I mean, you can see they all have about the same amount. They all have 100, 150. So this is actually like a Zuri smart loader, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, it's pretty standard belt stuff. I'd like to hitch a ride on this and pray I don't die. Whew. It's usually a 50-50 if I make those. So we'll head back, take a look at the main bus. It's quite a large main bus. Uh, but pretty cool nonetheless. So, actually, this is not really where I wanted to go. <laughs> this is the copper drop-off. Okay, so we've got copper running. That's good. Now, these trains should be fueled. I'm not really sure why he ran out. That was a bit odd. Um, I did notice somewhere in his base he was speed moduling uh, coal miners. Which is, again, one of those things I would suggest putting the modules towards, like, the control units or something and just putting more miners. Um, these don't need to be beaconed. It doesn't, I mean, it's does, not hurting on power, so it's okay. You'll just get more purple packs. Um, he is belting the packs quite a ways. Okay, so we have, like, 3, 6, uh, 9, 12, 15, I think? Or... Yeah, 14, sorry, 14. 14 of these that are level 1s, but then for greens, well, greens we have a little more, so that's good, because they need more. But then the blues we have, and it might end up being the same, but the blues are level 3 assemblers, and we have, like, 10 of them. So things may be a little off, but that's not that big of a deal. Again, um, copper wire, lacking copper, because, of course, we had copper issues. Um, this is fine. I'm um, speed moduling these. Again, kind of the same thing. I would say just add more machines rather than do this. Um, the, usually the art argument, just to kind of clarify for you guys, the argument where I, I say it's better to do the modules and beacons rather than build more stuff is when you're actually using modules and beacons, right? So like productivity moduling stuff and beaconing stuff, um, typically I find is better than just building more non-modeled and beacon stuff but in this case where they're not level three modules and there's no beacons or anything uh, i would say just add more machines um so there's that engines not bad electric engines not bad these are just belted over here uh some spaghetti but again not a huge deal tons of blue belt that's fine um this reminds me of something we need to look at really quick but uh yeah pretty big bus you know not bad four lanes of copper four lanes of iron I think it's a true four lane. I know it's not a one to four like we have seen, but um, just check here. It looks like looks like we do have four. Um, okay, it's three to four. I mean, that's not that bad. Okay, so one thing is there could have been a much easier way, I think, to split this off. This is kind of just a little, you know, logistical thing. So what he's doing is this is running this way. The red circuits are running the other direction. But instead of, like, doing a weird loop-de-doo here, um, he could have... And, again, this is just nitpicking, but just some general logistical stuff. Um, you know, you could do something along these lines, tear this up. And it looks like this isn't even splitting anywhere. Um, these aren't needed anywhere else, so could just do that. It's a, 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 bit, a bit cleaner, um, even in, if you even want to get, like, Will Belt OCD friendly, uh, you could do this, have the even spacing. 
Uh, but pretty much that's it. And and yeah, is it is uh, advice for where to go from here? You know, starting a new factory is always good because you you kind of learn from challenges and mistakes you you did previously. And uh, and yeah, you could either start a new factory. Um, you could continue launching rockets and just kind of improve things here. It looks like copper may still be a little bit of an issue. Um, he did hard limit this, which is good. Assemblers, um, not bad. Not bad at all. Making level threes, that's good. Efficiencies, not bad. Um, I would say maybe overdid the batteries a little bit, but it's not that big of a deal. So, yeah, we have low density structures, which are backed up. Um, this is not limited, but they only stack in 10, so there's really not that many in here, 480. Um, these guys are great on speed modules, but you know, still could pull the ones out of the other machines. And they need processing units, which as a last thing to look at, uh, I think circuits could definitely use more production, right? Because uh, blue circuits take 20 normal circuits per, and he has um, three, six, uh, nine, 12. He has 12 of these, and they're not speeded, but you know, 12 times 20 is what, 240? Um, blue circuit or green circuits needed however many seconds. Um, and he only has, I believe, a few sets of green circuits. And you can, I mean, you can see the belt, this is yellow belt too. The belt's a little lackluster and it could be something like copper, which it looks like it is. Um, so he, it's actually a fair bit. If this were fully fed with copper, um, this thing would be running quite a bit better. It, it does seem to be the right ratio. Um, now this is interesting. Um, this is something that is actually kind of cool. Normally you would either do a long-handed or just like a belt that merges. I do like this though because this, um, I mean, it's a buffer. So personally, I would prefer to either hard limit it or logistical limit it, um, especially since this is a logistical chest. But this is a good way to get circuits into the logistics thing without pulling off the belt. If you insert them through the chest, I actually quite like this. Um, these wooden ones, uh, I would say, make logistical chests and then just set a logistical limit on your inserters. Provided this is actually in the system, which it is. Um, you know, limit maybe 1,000 to 2,500, depending you know what you want to do personally. But I would definitely limit these. Um, but I do like this setup of passing it through the chest first. And uh, yeah, so more copper could just expand the, the copper smelter, maybe move it a bit, because it is pretty uh, pretty packed in here. Uh, speed modules, and it looks like we have a bit of a coal issue. There shouldn't even be coal on this line. That would help <laughs> if most of them were running. But uh, I think it will do it for this one, guys. Um, you know, not, not a ton to go over. Overall, pretty good. A lot of it would have just been even more nitpicking. But uh, hopefully the things I did go over uh, helped you out and anyone else as well and yeah from here I mean you could keep launching rockets uh, the rocket silo uh, it looked like you may have had another rocket uh, building or ready and you know just keep going on or start a new factory with new design ideas that's always fun but I believe that'll do it for this one guys next time Will should be joining me here and uh, looks like he needs to go kill some aliens too that's what we're waiting on is the purple packs uh, because there's no artifacts but anyway thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed and found it helpful if you did feel free to leave a like and until next time I look forward to seeing you all and do take care